I'm going to talk to you guys today about some of the reasons why I think our social media content is not working. If you're feeling like no matter what we post, no matter what we do, people are not engaging with it and it's not leading to any form of return. I'm at B2B Jade on TikTok, I get it. A lot of people are not on TikTok. But if you fancy following me, I make fun of leaders and CEOs and give all us marketers a pat on the back. And I also share some helpful content on there. My podcast, The B2B Marketing Gap, you can check out as well. Tons of advice on there, strategies. What's interesting about my business and for today is that my entire business is 100% inbound only from social media, zero selling whatsoever for me today. We're not going to talk about me and what I've done for the whole presentation, but I just want to set the scene so that when I'm given the advice on the steps that I would put in place, if I was in a B2B organization, this is what I would do building from what I've done on my personal brand. I went through a bit of a crazy time back in 2015. I'd been working in a really big corporate called DS Smith PLC who were amazing. I was heading up the international marketing team and I decided that it was time for a change. There was a lot of traveling pre-COVID. I joined a local firm as a marketing director and it didn't go to plan. I decided to leave, set up my own business, started to build my profile on LinkedIn, and then I had kids. And I fell into a dark hole for about two years and was nowhere to be seen. So I basically was nobody again. The algorithms forgot me. I was overcoming all sorts of things after having kids, postnatal anxiety, everything. When it came to about 2018, 2019, social media was not really a thing for me. Come into 2020, 2021, I'm doing a little bit on LinkedIn, but it's not really doing much. I decided to set up a TikTok account because I thought, well, actually, Instagram is pretty saturated. Why don't I try a new platform? Why don't I see how it goes? And it turns out it agreed with me. Today, I've got coming up to 30,000 followers. I've had some brand deals with Adobe and Pipedrive and a big hotel chain. The channel of TikTok, 90% of all my work has come from TikTok. Why is B2B social media not getting results? If you think about the marketing function of B2B, 2010, where the internet wasn't really a thing, we were kind of still fighting for the fact that a website should be more than just a brochure site. Back in 2010, and SEO was coming through, and social media was like, what? The main crux of growth was a salesperson selling to a prospect. And so naturally, marketing were the support function to create collateral to make it more likely that the salesperson would close the deal. We've kind of stayed there. I think that's what's happened. B2C don't face it as much because they always were fragmented away from the end customer. In most cases, they had to rely on marketing to get in front of a customer. Whereas B2B, traditionally, we were supporting the sales function. Marketing are suffering with two things. One, we are still being treated as the sales support function. Tasks, do the tasks get the website page updated, get a new landing page, send out a campaign tomorrow, do this brochure in seven languages by next week, blah, 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 and then bang, why aren't we getting leads? You're in charge of getting leads. Why aren't you getting leads? Because I've been doing all the stuff you're asking me to do. I've just been completely on the task wheel. This is what I'm hearing every day on TikTok, thousands of comments. People are exhausted, they're fed up. That's the fundamental reason. But I would say that the big one is and social media. I was imagining yesterday, like if I was at a party and what if, it, this, might, this might work, it might not. Um, if I was at a party and B2B social media was there, what would they be like? We're gonna try and act it out. They walk into a party. Hi, my name is Sam. And they're like, hi Sam. Welcome to my house. Do you wanna see my garden? Oh, um, I'm okay, thanks for a minute. I'm just having my drink. Okay, we've got an attic too. Do you want to go see the attic? It's right up the stairs. Go see the attic. I'm okay for a minute. All right, did I tell you about the garden? Yeah, you did tell me about the garden. I don't want to look at it right now. Okay, well, let me know when you want to see the garden or the attic. Can I have your number? You're fine. You're right, thanks. That is how I see B2B social media. It's like, download this, give us your data, read this, read this, listen to us, listen to us, listen to us. And people are like, they're not, they're not even offended, they're just uninterested. And the frequency is not high enough for them to probably even see it anyway. This is not a diss at anyone in here, by the way, because I've done all this, because 
social media tends to be an afterthought when we've got so much to do. If the good B2B marketing social media was at the party, it would be more like, hey, I'm Sam, welcome to my party, how are you? Oh, I'm good, I've just joined the area. Oh, great, what are you into? Oh, I really like rock climbing. Oh my gosh, that's amazing, my cousin does. We're going in a few weeks, do you want to come too? Yeah, great, oh, there's also a community you could join. Should I get your number and we can keep in touch and anything you need, let me know. Oh, that's amazing, yeah. It's that helping back and forth, actually caring about someone. The reason B2B marketers struggle is we're not always close enough to the customer to know what they actually care about. And when we ask sales, what do they care about? They're kind of like, stay in your box, do me a brochure. It's a real difficult conundrum for us. I talk about this a lot on my podcast. It's the name of the podcast, the B2B marketing gap. The B2B marketing gap is the huge void between leaders and the marketing resource of the business, where strategy should be. You will have a marketing manager who is an operational person. Their job is to take a strategy as given them to them by leaders, implement it, manage it, and they're fantastic at that. Marketing managers, we're really good at organising, making things happen, optimising. But where there's no marketing director and there's no strategy, there's this huge gap where leaders are like, why aren't you getting results? And the marketer's going, why aren't you helping me be set up for results? Why don't we have a budget? Why don't we have anything that we need? And there's this huge gap. And it's almost no one's fault. It's like, you can't really blame the leader. You can, because it is their fault. But like, <laughs> you can't, you know, ultimately, it's not their fault in that they haven't been educated yet into understanding that. When I speak to CEOs, they're like, oh, that's why I've had six marketing managers fail at the role. It's because they were not meant to be the strategic person. They were meant to build up to that. That's the biggest thing, is that where we don't have a marketing strategy, how can any element of our marketing work? If you're interested in the topic of the B2B marketing gap, I really recommend my podcast. It's just me talking like this just for ages about stuff like the marketing gap. And then the other big reason I think it's not working, feel free to shout out who coined this. People were talking about it on LinkedIn a while ago, but random acts of marketing. Someone said it and I can't remember, so I'm really sorry to that person. But random acts of marketing, it's that thing of like, we should get a social media post out today. Oh, we've got an event coming up, let's post something. I mean, I did it last night for this event because I was like, oh, I haven't posted about that yet. What happens is that it's unstrategic. What can we post? And we're like, oh, let's highlight a team member because we're not sure what to talk about. And it's all stuff I've done. It's not like, again, I'm not dissing. This random act of marketing not strategically linked with a plan is another big reason it's not working. And then the last but super important one is messaging indifference. It's where you could post out every single day, two times a day, but if the content is not interesting to the person that you're trying to target, and it's just stuff, and it's definitely not hitting on a pain point, people are not gonna dislike it, you know, they'll think you're professional, and, and let's be not too negative, they're gonna see that you're present and active and they'll remember you, and that's great. So it's not a bad thing to post about, you know, we're having a conference today, like, great, that's a positive thing. But it's not necessarily cutting through, here are the frustrations you're feeling, here's what you've tried to overcome those things, here's why it hasn't worked, and then here's a better way, i.e. we do that. Messaging indifference is something to really think about and reflect on your social posts. Are we suffering with messaging indifference? What can we do? We'll have a look, So I can't remember what's next. Okay. Yeah. When I was given the topic for today, the guys were like, we'd like you to cover social media. I was like, oh no, it's tactic. I don't want to do tactics. But then I thought, well, no, because it's a really interesting topic and we can relate it back to the importance of creating a marketing strategy first. This is why I've developed the B2B Breakthrough Academy is to help B2B marketers actually be able to create a strategy. Because I'll be completely honest, up until two years ago, I still could not write a marketing strategy. I don't know if anyone else feels like this here, but like when you go to write a marketing plan, it's just overwhelming. What section? I don't understand what that bit is. Why the heck do we need a past analysis? I learned this model. Do I need it? Do I not? I created the course almost to help focus my mind on exactly what templates work. But I really think that to get your social media content right, you do have to have a clear marketing strategy. And so if you listen to the latest episode of the podcast, it goes through the six stages 
of what needs to go into a marketing strategy. I think that's a good place to start because it's really just explaining why we need that strategy. The way that social media links with this is social media posts without a plan is like throwing bricks into a yard and expecting a three-story house to be built. Just keep chucking them in, something's gonna happen, something's gonna happen, something's gonna happen. And then my husband challenged me last night and he went, yeah, but surely putting the bricks in the yard is gonna help build towards something. I was like, all right, yes, okay. So yes, putting out social media posts does give some positive benefit. It's obviously better than not posting anything, but without a strategy, we're not gonna get that built to Story House. Step one, yes, create a marketing strategy. Ask yourself, do we have one? You can listen to that episode if you wanna figure out what steps you might be missing. Step two is clarify the audience pain points. And I have got a freebie template to give you. And you can map out different questions that your audience might ask you. It's a very real down to earth template because I think sometimes what are the audience pain points feels so big and scary. But to me, I think what are the big things they ask us when they're stuck with something or they're frustrated with something with a competitor? When they pick up the phone to one of our reps, what are they saying that's irritating them or isn't working? Really getting into the crux of what they actually care about. Because something I found with content is that we really over-intellectualize it. We aren't the person in the room selling to a prospect. And then social media, we become this formal version of our brand. Maybe you're the owner of your business. Maybe you have a fantastic salesperson in your business or business development person. What are they saying to your prospects, figure it out. What are they asking of your sales rep? And then how are they answering those questions that make the eyes light up? I'm from a sales background, and the reason I respect salespeople so much, whilst I don't always, not the word like, I don't always appreciate their treatment of marketing, I do see them as a bit of a rock star because they are able to resonate emotionally with a prospect, sometimes in a detrimental way, in that they're too ferociously trying to sell, but ultimately they really, really care about what is it this person cares about? How am I gonna convince them we're the best people to work with? And so in many ways, marketing can learn from sales with that. I recommend spend time with your best, whoever sells the most, Try and figure out what's their secret sauce. What, what is it they're saying that's getting people to really buy from the company? So what frustrations do these people have? What questions do they ask? How can you help them? The template at the end has got a 10 step framework for you to fill out and go through and jot it all down. And by the end, you'll have a content plan. An example of an ideal client persona with pain points in there, picture this person. Often I advise people to put a real client in there that they as a marketer have met. Because when you think, this is Sophie, would Sophie care about this? No, she wouldn't read this. Really getting to know your ideal audience. It's not just creating a persona and skipping past it, which I've done. I'll just chuck that in there, that's fine. Really make sure, do I know this person? Do I need to listen in on some sales calls? Do I need to do something to really get into this person's head? Okay, step three, really nail your brand positioning. And what I mean by brand positioning is this. And imagine a customer is asking this. Why should we choose you over the other options available? The second part is so important because most brands just talk about the first bit, why should we choose you? And they answer that question. Over the other options available is what makes brand positioning powerful because the other option could be not doing anything. It could be a competitor. It could be doing it themselves. Highlight in your brand positioning. Here is why we would be the best option for you in line with the problems you're facing to get the solutions you're looking for. There is a podcast episode and a webinar replay through all my links talking about what brand positioning is. And I go through the process as well, if that's useful to anyone. What we're trying to do, usually people talk about their brand expertise, that bubble there, they just sort of stay there. And maybe they go a little bit into where it links with customer needs but they don't make sure that they're moving away from competitor strengths. They don't figure out how to meet what their brand is really good at, directly in line with what their customer cares about and well away from what their competitors are good at and strong at, so that we're highlighting what they're very weak at. I really recommend looking into brand positioning because brand positioning fuels your content strategy. 
Step four, I recommend selecting what you would call pillar platforms. A lot of B2B brands I see are on all of them. And actually, I recommend picking one pillar platform. In B2B, that often makes sense that that's LinkedIn. It's our platform, isn't it? It's where it's meant to be. It's a bit men mental that I'm on TikTok, but really it's more of a personal brand, so it makes sense. Pick one pillar platform that you're going to go all in on and you're going to really focus everything around and get really good on. And then repurpose to two to three channels. And I will explain a repurposing plan in a minute. I really recommend that because then you're not overwhelmed by channels and actually the fewer you're on, the better success you can make of them. I recommend it in order, LinkedIn, X, Instagram probably before Facebook. I do think Facebook could be really good for B2B going forwards. And then TikTok, honestly, I don't recommend TikTok for B2B right now unless you really can go for it and you have a person who is a real subject matter expert and you can get out a lot of content, but it's definitely one to play around with. And then there's obviously Pinterest as well. There's so many, but I think probably LinkedIn for most of us is going to be the big one. Step five, select your content pillars. Now that you've got your platforms, you need to select your pillars. If you've got clear brand positioning, we are X business. We serve X category of people with differentiated core benefit, i.e. this is what you're going to get as a core benefit of working with us because proof points, that's your positioning. We want to pick out of that bundle two or three topics that you can talk about with real authority. It has to be things that your audience really cares about. It has to be things that you are very, very high authority to be able to talk about. The B2B marketing gap. I did see a lot of people nodding when I talked about that. It's not a mistake. I came up with the B2B marketing gap out of my brand positioning as something that would probably resonate with marketing managers. Think of what are your two to three B2B marketing gap themes and never, ever talk about anything else, ever. One of the biggest things I see is people jumping around with what they're talking about. Oh, we'll go over here for a bit. Oh, that's not working. We'll go over here for a bit. That's not working. We'll go over here. If your business is really good at this, this and this, only talk about those things. For example, six months of a content plan for me at one point was, here's the reasons why your marketing isn't working. Here's why you need a marketing plan if you're going to get your marketing to work. Here's why people don't have strategies. Here's six ways to create a marketing plan. Hey, here's why you need a marketing plan again. And I only talked about it, but it's the only way to get famous for anything. Make sure they're topics that really differentiate you, that your competitors are not talking about. They have to resonate with your audience. And also, this is a really interesting one, make sure it is not divorced from your offering. This happens a lot. If I were to go out and talk about web, digital strategy, SEO, AdWords, I have a basic level of understanding about it. But if someone reached out to me and said, hey, I saw you talking about AdWords, can we talk? I'd be like, ah, no. It has to be what you're offering is really want. Don't talk about stuff just that your audience is interested in. It has to be stuff that you are actually very, very good at and you would love to be talked to about those things. When you're trying to get this out of your leaders, what these should be, your best salesperson or your MD, if they were stood on a stage and they were talking in front of a thousand industry experts who worked in their industry, what would they feel comfortable to talk about? And no matter what someone asked them, they'd be like, I've got this. That is your content pillars. Because if I stood up here and talked about AdWords, I wouldn't be wanting questions from these guys because I wouldn't feel confident in it. Okay, right, this is a heavy one. This is our content 10 step process for B2B companies. This is what I do and this is what I would do in a B2B company if I wanted my social media content to work. Step one, I would have a lead magnet for every quarter of the year or every four months, something like that. For each of your content pillars, so you know the two to three themes that you can really talk about with authority, have a lead magnet for each of them. Have a high value piece of content like a how-to guide with a video training attached with it. For each of those three things, have a really high value piece. I would list out the top 10 questions that we can answer with authority. You can ask your salespeople, what are the big questions that our prospects ask us? List them out, so basic. And the template you're gonna get at the end literally has this format for you. Choose a question every two weeks. Answer the question with a piece of long form content. Long form can be a blog, it can be a video, it can be a podcast. I recommend get some 
decent-ish equipment. Film a specialist in your business answering the question, but just chat to them. Like, all oh, right, we're gonna have a little chat. Got the tripod like I've got here, the little mic. This doesn't feel freaky. I'm filming this now, ready to repurpose later. Film them, get them in the zone, get them chatting to you as if you're a prospect. You, it's gonna be awkward for a while. Just talk like, hey, can you tell me what are the biggest reasons our customers aren't seeing success? Just chat, they'll get into their flow. Film a specialist. Then edit it down in a tool called Descript. Upload that piece of content to a YouTube channel and a podcast. Repurpose it into two or three blogs. There are AI tools now that you can take the transcript of the podcast, put it in, ask it to create a few blogs. Obviously you need human oversight with AI and turn it into blogs that you can put on your site. SEO experts will tell you we need regular relevant content. Within every single asset that you create, always direct people to your lead magnet. You've got a YouTube video, download the full report here. Join our next live webinar here. So a lead magnet could be a webinar, it could be anything. Repurpose and break it down into short form videos. Let's say you've got a, a 12 minute video of your expert. Break it down into 60 second sound bites. Put it into a format for LinkedIn, write a bit of a post, publish. For the full video, here's the YouTube. For our next webinar, here's the link. For our lead magnet, here's the link. Whatever you want to do. Every day, every day, five posts a week on every platform you have. But if you see when it's strategic, it's not as scary because it means you're just creating a couple of videos a month and repurposing them. Craft social posts linked to long form. Do not give up. Six to nine months. Keep going. Six to nine months. This was my process. One to three months. Why am I bothering? No one's engaging. This is so cringe because I was a TikToker. It's really challenging creating content. I'm no good at this. Three to six months. Oh, people are starting to mention they've seen my content. Hmm, maybe it's going to work. No customers, no return. Why am I doing this? Six to nine months. Whoa, I just got a client. They said they found me on TikTok. That's bonkers. <laughs> and they binge listen to my podcast and now they trust me all of a sudden. People would come on coaching calls and say, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me, Jade. I'd be like, what? You're paying me. That was the real difference with the content nurturing them. They were thanking me, it was wild. I wonder if anyone else is gonna do this and then bang, six more clients came in the door, found you on, podcast, on TikTok, been listening to your podcast, you're talking about everything I needed. Can I have a session? Can we work with you? Nine to 12 months, okay, I can't handle this. There's too many clients. So now I'm launching the one-to-many course, the B2B Breakthrough Academy, so I can coach 100 people at a time and actually help people where I wouldn't have been able to. I wanna leave on a couple of things here. The power of dark social. If you haven't really heard or looked into dark social just yet, I recommend that you do. Buyers have changed how they buy and it's never going back. They like to ask others who are professionals like them. Who do you use? Are they any good? Are these good? They use in online communities. Set up an online community. Create one. Bring people into it. That can be your lead magnet. Join our free community. There's loads of finance directors like you helping each other. Okay, I'm just going to mention in terms of your content split, I recommend that 10% of your posts are selling your service. This is a product. We sell this. Here's who it's for. 50% of your content needs to be about everything we just talked about, how to overcome problems. Share examples of your work 30% of the time. I'm not saying don't do the case studies. It's great. Case studies are brilliant. Testimonials. And then 10% of your content should be culture posts. What's the team up to? A lot of social accounts only do this, and I've done that too, because my marketing team, we didn't have access to the good stuff. So we were like, uh, here's our Christmas tree. Um, we've got pizza this lunchtime. Like all good stuff, but just we want to add to it. Do take inspiration from the best social media people in the world, influencers, not other B2B brands. Look at what influencers are doing. Look at what subject matter experts are doing. A lot of the time now, CEOs are building personal brands. Help your expert feel at ease. That's a big one. Help them feel like this is just a chat. This is not content. I just want to talk to you about our customers. The camera's on, forget about it. I've forgotten about that camera now. Just forget about it. Because it's like this, oh, create content. Everyone goes, oh, we're making content. And it's, it's just not that big a deal. Okay, so there's a few tools here. Scheduling tools, Metrical, Planable, or Hootsuite, Descript. It's amazing. It will shorten word gaps. It'll take out what's called the millennial pause, where someone presses play and then goes, I'd like to talk to you today about it. So we need to get rid of the millennial pause in all our content. We need to delete the erms, the ahs, the kind ofs. If you look at my TikTok, you'll notice how highly edited it is in Descript, because I'm like, bang, 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 bang. Chat GPT-4, like, use it. We've got this co-pilot. It's revolutionising 
everything is making me able to do 20 times more. I think how I've used ChatGPT4 in the last six months would have cost me about £100,000 if I were paying people. The prompts are what makes it. And there's the QR code if anyone wants the template. When you scroll over that, it's going to take you to a link and basically it's a download. It'll download and you can fill it out. I really appreciate you listening to me. If you want to learn more about what I'm doing, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, Jade Tambini, or B2B Jade on TikTok, Instagram. And there's a link in my bio with everything to find out about me. And I haven't breathed the whole time. <laughs> Thank you very much. You mentioned it being priority for B2B brands. Tech. Yeah. And obviously, yourself, you specialise in B2B, but you've done very well on TikTok. Is that uh, that's such a good question. The reason I'm on TikTok is like weird. I was just like, oh, let's just see how this goes. And it happened. TikTok is so hard to break. You have to be super excited by it and like bring that energy. And so I think it's a personality match for me. There's other platforms where you can go really hard with good content and it works no matter what. But TikTok seems to be this weird thing where like, I know amazing creators on there who have been posting consistently for so long and they're still not getting that much traction. Whereas on LinkedIn, I think if you post relevant stuff that's gonna help your audience consistently, you just do start to grow that following. With TikTok, what I found is that I'm a new creator pretty much every post. It does not care about my follow account. So if it's not a good video, I will get five likes. And if it's a good video, it'll go viral. So it's really, it's a hard push. The audience demographics, so 50% of my audience are above 35, which I find interesting that people think is super young people. I think TikTok's a good one for experimenting with as a secondary one to see. But I think we can't hide from the fact that LinkedIn is the professional network. You can use Sales Navigator on there. Nine times out of 10, if you search all of your client list, and all of the people you want to work with, they're going to be on LinkedIn. And I think that's why I can't really move away. And also you have to remember that my audience are marketing managers now. That's who's been finding me on TikTok is marketing managers, which are very different than like C that answers it. Yeah. What role do you think a LinkedIn business page has in LinkedIn? Because sometimes I struggle with clients who really want to keep posting on their page and I'm trying to encourage them to post personally more. And I just wondered what your thoughts were on LinkedIn business pages. The personal brands tend to perform better, don't they? Because they've got all the connections. What I like to do is get marketers to kind of take control of the subject matter experts page. So they've got a login as well. If you craft a page post, get as many people as possible to share it, comment, like, repost, because that's always good. Then also have a version of that posted by the lead of the subject matter. Say you identify six people in the business who have really good network, they've got a great profile picture, good call to actions, write them for them and either post it for them and then get everyone else interacting. I think using both, you have to have a, a company one, don't you? Because it's unprofessional not to, but you're right to be pushing people to share and repost and things like that. You can also test out organic content, what works best and then put ad spend behind it. I always recommend that as like, I've got a post that went viral on TikTok and it also went viral three times on LinkedIn. And so something I need to do next is, is recreate it professionally with a call to action at the end so that it drives actual revenue rather than just, I was in my hoodie in my living room, like sat there like that on TikTok and it went viral. But if I'd known it would go viral, I would have like had a call to action, like, hey, sign up now for this or whatever. So that's a good word is see what performs organically. Well, thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, guys. Sorry, I would have left more time. <laughs>